Hello friends, I hope you are enjoying the series. So we la for the last episode, we have completed 10 episodes of this series and today's episode is the 11th episode. I hope you are enjoying all the stories, making all the toys and having fun at home. So today's story is a little special. You know why? Because today's story is about a very old scientist. Not old in age, but he was born in 3rd century BC. That is before Jesus Christ. That's so old, right? When we talk about him, we always say, Eureka! I think you have guessed who am I talking about. And we also imagine a bathtub full of water. Yes, I'm talking about Archimedes. In the 3rd century BC, Hirion, the king of Sicilian city of Syracuse, chose Archimedes to supervise an engineering project. Hirion commissioned a sailing vehicle 50 times bigger than a standard ancient warship. A warship 50 times bigger than that he imagined to make a ship as big as that in those times. And he named it Syracusea after the city. Hiron wanted to construct the largest ship ever which was destined to be given as a present to the Egyptian ruler. But could a boat the size of a palace possibly float? He imagined a boat floating on water of a size of a palace. Imagining that in those days was also so brave. In Archimedes' days, no one had attempted anything like this. It was like asking, can a mountain fly? Yes, it was that crazy. Hundreds of workmen were to labor for years on constructing this boat out of beams of pine and ropes from him. The top deck on which eight watchtowers were to stand was supported by no columns again, but by vast wooden images of Atlas holding the world on their shoulders. Can you imagine? There was no pillars, but there were images that was going to hold the watchtowers. Can you imagine? It would be so beautiful, so beautiful ship they had imagined. For the enjoyment of its passengers, the ship was to feature a flower-lined walkway, a sheltered swimming pool, a bathhouse with hot water tub, and a library filled with books and statues, a temple of a goddess, and a gymnastic hall, and all this on a ship floating on water and just not floating, it should sail on water. I'm imagining it and I want to go to that ship. And just to make these things more difficult for Archimedes, Hiron insisted to pack the ship full of dining stuff for the dinner of the passengers. 400 tons of grain, 10,000 jars of packed fish, 74 tons of drinking water and 600 tons of wool. It would have carried about 1000 people on board and including 600 soldiers. Just imagine. And it hosted 20 horses stable. Wasn't this out of imagination back then? Well, let's just say that failure was at the footstep of Archimedes. So he took this, as a, this problem as a challenge. Will it sink or will it float? He keep, kept on thinking. One day perhaps he was sitting in his bathhouse wondering why the water comes out of the tub when he jumps inside. That moment when he was 
sitting in the bathtub was an inspirational moment for him. As the object kept on any fluid pushes outwards the force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by that object, he thought. In other words, in simpler words, if 2000 ton ship was to be displaced 2000 tons of water, then and only then it would float barely. Now if this same ship could displace 400 tons of water, then it would float very comfortably, he thought. Even today, engineers call this as the Archimedes principle. This sounds a lot like another story which involves Archimedes and a bathtub. And it's possibly the same actually, I think. Just a twisted one where he was saying Eureka and coming out of the bathtub to run to the king to tell his achievement. You may have heard that. On the day the ship arrived in Egypt, on its first and the only voyage, we can only imagine how the residents of Alexandria gathered at the harbour to watch this marvellous ship arrive on the harbour and passengers coming out of it. This extraordinary ship was the titanic of the ancient world except that it did not sink and gave us a big achievement of Archimedes. I hope you love the story and here we can learn that we don't need high-tech machines or lavish labs to come up with an idea. You can just take anything and anywhere and come up with an idea even in your bathroom. I hope you've enjoyed the story and now let's make a toy. In today's toy, or we can say an experiment, we can be a little messy. So I'll advise do it somewhere outside or in a bathroom. So what all do we need? We need a big tub where we can collect the water. We need a bucket filled with water till the rim. This is very important. The water should be filled till the rim. We need a container in which we can fill water till an extent. See that it floats. You can try it in some other bucket of water and see that the container floats. So see, keep some air in it too. And another container to collect the water which will be displaced by this object in the tub. So now what are we going to do is we can imagine that this is our ship. So if this ship like the Archimedes ship will float on the water, it will displace some water and that water should be equal to the weight of this ship. So let's start. So remove this very carefully so that no water falls in your outer tub. Remove this bucket very carefully so that no water falls in your outer tub. It's advisable you just throw a little bit of water away so that it will not mix up and carefully collect this water. And now let's measure. Have you seen the water level? Yes. Now let's measure our water level. See, our experiment has turned out to be so exact. Now, can anyone tell me why? Is there a little more water than the water we already filled? Think? Yes, you are very right. Because we did not take the weight of this container. 
This container also has some weight which will displace the amount of water equal to its weight. So you can see that the water level it is a little more than the water we had already filled in this container. So now there is a bit error. We need to weigh this container also. So next time I will show you how to make a weighing balance at home. It is a mechanical weighing balance. You can make it at home and you don't need a weighing balance at home. But if some of the friends have a weighing balance at home, this you can weigh in your home and try to do the experiment even today. I hope you enjoyed the story and the experiment. Let's meet up next time. Bye.